25 years ago, Princess Diana's car crashed inside the Pont de la Alma tunnel in Paris, France. Her lover, Dadi Fayed, died upon impact along with the driver. And even though Diana survived, it took about 40 minutes to get her from the car to the ambulance. The official story was that they were trying to free her from the car, but several witnesses say that Diana was conscious and unobstructed. Photographs show that the back seat of the car was undamaged, and witnesses were pleading with the police to open the door and help her. Once in the ambulance, it took about 40 minutes for them to choose a hospital, and when they finally set off, the ambulance drove at a snail's pace and made several stops, taking about 40 minutes to drive less than four miles. Doctors were turned away, witnesses were strip searched, cameras were confiscated, no evidence was gathered, no blood samples were taken, and by 3 a.m., the entire scene was sprayed down with high pressure water hoses. Mercedes wanted to study the wreckage to see why it failed so badly, but they were denied. Diana's body was taken by the royal family, who had her reproductive organs removed before burying her remains. All 17 cameras along the route of the crash were mysteriously turned off, and all radio police frequencies went down. Witnesses were assaulted and threatened, and there was no investigation not until the inquest 10 years later, which is when most people learned that Diana had penned a note in 1996 saying that someone was going to kill her in a car accident. This note was concealed for six years. At the inquest, experts agreed that Diana would have survived if they had gotten her to a hospital. But the blame was put upon a military-style attack. According to witnesses, a group of motorcycles, along with a white Fiat Uno, worked in concert to crash the car. First, with a blinding flash of light, followed by an explosion from the front tire of the Mercedes. During the inquest, a former MI6 agent described being shown the very same plan in 1992 for a possible MI6 assassination of Slobodan Milosevic and claimed it was MI6 who killed Diana. Because of all this, the inquest ended with the verdict of unlawful killing, blaming her death on the mysterious military hit squad. But the mainstream media spun the entire thing to make it sound like it was the paparazzi that caused her to crash, which is demonstrably false. And while there was no investigation into finding the members of this military hit squad, three years later, the alleged driver of the white Fiat, who had ties to MI6, reportedly committed suicide after being found shot twice in the back of the head and burned inside of his car. During the inquest, many things were kept from the jury, such as the fact that Diana's seatbelt was found to be defective and evidence of the car being sabotaged. Interestingly, these things would have brought more suspicion towards Dottie's father, Mohammed Al-Fayed who, after turning down repeated offers from the French government to provide security, was solely responsible for Diana's security detail. And at the last minute, had them leave their security detail in front of the hotel as a decoy and take a different car, a car that was recently stolen, broken, repaired, and never checked by security. Left with only one security guard, they were also assigned a new driver. Henri Paul, who had no chauffeur permit, was tied to foreign intelligence services, was seen on camera signaling to someone just before setting off, had received over 50,000 francs the day of the crash. And this was all under the watch of Mohammed Al-Fayed, who was deeply connected to the intelligence community. He was business partners with one of Lee Harvey Oswald's handlers and represented the grandfather of Mohammed Atta. But none of that was mentioned during the inquest. Instead, with the help of pop culture agents such as Howard Stern and Piers Morgan, Mohammed Al-Fayed has provided the world with the cover story that Diana was pregnant with Dottie's child and Prince Philip had her killed because he's racist, which seems like a strange cover story. That is, if you don't realize that the entire thing was a satanic ritual. Rituals are meant to be witnessed and the death of Diana is steeped and satanic ritual. The royal family, originally known as the Sachs-Coburg-Gotha bloodline, changed their name to Windsor 
to sound more British. Their inbred family is traced back to Vlad the Impaler, otherwise known as Dracula. And with several proud Nazis in the family, including Prince Philip, the royal family is obsessed with pagan ritual and all things occulted. According to the carefully planned breeding of royal bloodlines, the marriage between Diana and Charles was for the Merovingian ancestry of Lady Diana to be seeded into the royal family. Diana was well aware of this and referred to herself as the Windsor Broodmare. They were married at St. Paul's Cathedral, owned by the royal family and built upon the site of a Roman temple dedicated to the goddess Diana. According to occult beliefs, the goddess Diana was Lucifer's consort, and on August 13th, 1313, they produced a magical daughter named Aradia. In Freemasonry, this same trio is known as Osiris, Isis, and Horus. This same ritual is shown in the Roman Polanski film, Rosemary's Baby, where the innocent virgin is unknowingly recruited by a satanic cult to mate with Lucifer and spawn a child. After the birth of Prince William, Diana became a threat to the family. She had major influence and used it to shine a light on the family's powerful interests, such as the endless war machine. Her life was being threatened, and she told several friends that the family was going to kill her. Less than a month before her death and after a series of affairs, Diana started seeing family friend Dadi Fayed. And on August 31st, the satanic ritual sacrifice date for the goddess Diana, Diana of Wales was driven out of the way past an ancient Egyptian obelisk and into a tunnel named in dedication to the goddess Diana. Inside this tunnel, Diana's Mercedes crashed into the 13th pillar, where she was kept to bleed to death above a known ancient Merovingian underground chamber for the ritual blood sacrifice worship to the goddess Diana. This is the religion of the world's elite. Prince Philip said he would like to be reincarnated as a deadly virus to wipe out humanity. His underling, Maurice Strong, co-founded the World Economic Forum with Klaus Schwab, and Prince Charles, who brags of being related to Dracula, co-founded the World Economic Forum's Great Reset Initiative. These are the leaders of the so-called New World Order. These monsters are the best that they have. Reporting for InfoWars, this is Greg Reese. Thank you for watching the latest Greg Reese Report. Be sure to go to reesreport.com to see my latest videos, sign up for my free newsletter, and subscribe for exclusive content. And be sure to support my sponsor at infowarstore.com. We are now living in the void, sliding towards collapse in the strange space between what we've known and what's to come. And right now, the most important thing to remember is don't panic. Stay calm, because now is the time that we must get our bearings and steer the ship onto a safe, sound course. There is nothing stopping we the people from making our own rules and building our own society. All we gotta do is survive the crash. And right now, we still have time to prepare. The world fiat currency system is racing towards zero. It's time to convert it into hard assets now, including food, water, and survival gear to keep us strong and at the ready. Go to preparetoday.com for the essentials, storable foods, water filtration, first aid, power, and more at preparetoday.com.